Beach Grove now? Still? Indianapolis. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I think I, I can't remember if you moved out to Greenfield or where. But uh, I live by Gr Beach Grove, not oh, okay. too far from it, but not in Perry Township. Yeah, been going to Speed Drum since 19 whatever, and I was a <laughs> many time champion. Are you ready? And three, two, one. You go ahead and. Yeah, my name's uh, Wayne Arnold, and uh, I live in Indianapolis, and uh, my age is uh, 67, and I uh, started at the Speed Room at, uh, I think it's around about 1967, and I'm a seven-time track championship air champion and a three-time World Figure Eight Championship. And, uh, now you're also second generation driver. Uh, yes, to Billy Arnold, my dad, which he started in the 1940s when it was dirt, owned by Sexton's uh, out there. Leroy Warner, he ran under them. And uh, John Stiles, there. So he'd been there since it's open, mm -hmm. dang near, you know. It's, Can you remember your first time coming to the Speedrome? I mean, we're talking to your babe in arms, I well, think, for you, but little bitty guy mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know I remember run up you usually sit over on the back stretch so we could talk to dad over the over by the pits and we us and all the racer kids we raced up and down the the aisles you know so mm -hmm. and I can't uh, really what remember what year I came there you know but but I think I was about five six years old so I mean you you, you actually have, you, you actually were there when the in the early days of the track itself, your dad running with when it was, if I recall, a dirt wall was on the pit side, actually around it, and just a little scrawny guardrail. What was the track layout? What was it like being at the track in those early days with the splintery boards and everything else compared to what you've got now? Well, when I can really remember back at the walls was uh, <clears throat> sheet steel. They started out at, uh, at just like your highway. <clears throat> strips of metal down through there, you know, and they look like this down through there, <laughs> and a couple of poles sticking this way, and a couple of poles sticking that way, and it, it got a little better. They finally put some flat steel around it, you know, and but that was what, you know, I can't, I don't remember that, what was back in the dirt and stuff, but I remember, you know, as I got 12, 13 years old, and, uh, but I remember when they, I don't remember when they paved it, but when Dad started running figure eight, that there was dirt on the sides of the figure eight, had a crossover, you know, and mm -hmm. stuff there when they first brought that out. And I can remember who won the first figure eight out there was Del uh, Utterback. Okay. Yeah, the first one to run. But but the strategy of really, you know, I watched Dad do it and then racing is, you know, to pass a car, you come off the corner and you sort of ease the guy over into the dirt a little bit where he spin you get on around him down the straightaway so you know so i watched dad and you know and how he run and stuff so back in the day they actually used the track conditions as a way of uh improving the racing performance yeah okay but i seen it on rainy you know they used to just let us rain race you know as when it rained and stuff so you had the mud and we only run one windshield in them where you could <laughs> lean over and see out the side you know so uh -huh. <clears throat> but that's why I remember sometimes there that uh, they didn't stop the the figure eight when like a car was wrecked in a crossover or something. And you sat there, and I remember sometimes I've sat out there over in the something happened to it, and sitting toward the intersection over there, and uh, Dad be leading or something other, and then muddy his windshield or something other. I remember trying to get some water and try to throw it at his windshield when he come by. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how wild it was, you know, when, he, when it was out there. Okay. First car that you built, that you were, that was your car. Can you remember what it was, what year it was? What was what, for Wayne Arnold's, not necessarily the car that somebody else gave you, but the first car that was yours? <clears throat> yeah, the first car was like a 51 Chevy Coupe. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the first car I built. And, and uh, I... As I learned, my you know, dad taught me, I learned to do everything and build the motor from right on out and everything in the car I built, but you know, the cages and stuff wasn't like, we used to take drive shafts and this would be our cage over top of our <laughs> head, you know, weld it together. And, but 
but it's a good race car and I built all my motors and everything you know to do there and, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's about where I come from there. Okay. Now moving on up through time you had a pretty good little career outside the speedrome not just necessarily uh, in stock cars either but uh, tell us a little bit about what Wayne Arnold did at his post speed speedrome. You had an ASA you drove the Corvette in the ASA, American Speed Association. You had some yeah, open wheel racing uh, in there. What else did, did Wayne Arnold do? some ASA, the closer racetracks, uh, the sponsors that I had really didn't want to go, you know, too far. I get, you know, with Winchester, Salem, mm -hmm. and Dayton, and stuff like that. I ran around about a 100 mile radius, so mm -hmm. I really didn't get the, the outcast that I needed. And, Still, I t started too late in racing. You know, the time it got there where I got the money to go somewhere, it just, uh, you know, nothing was working out. When you get older, you use, you gotta be young and dumb. <laughs> you know, so, so, but we did pretty good. You know, we were up there and we run against uh, like a Mark Martin and uh, Rusty Wallace and stuff. You know, we run fourths and fifths. We go there with one set of new tires. They come <laughs> with a truckload. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we, we run actually pretty good. And then when, when uh, the drone act opened back up for Outlaws. John Stiles took it over. My sponsor wanted to come there, so I had to bring my my good stuff back in and run, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. that's about where where that went to. What's one of your favorite races you ever ran out there? You have, have any one that sticks out in your mind as being the one that just still gives you a thrill? <sighs> I don't know. The one that really sticks out at me is probably the short track championship at John Stiles had. Mm -hmm. And I got up there and I took the lead in it and run pretty well gone. And Kenny's running second in it. And we go and we just come down about, uh, I'd say, 25, 30, 20 laps left. Maybe not that. And uh, Phil Phil's spun me out. Coming around, I was passing him on the outside. Anyway, he spun me and, and, uh, Kenny St. John and uh, Lonnie Breedlove, both of them got around me with only uh, probably eight, nine laps left, you know, to go. And uh, Kenny was running uh, second then. Lonnie was leading. And I run uh, Kenny down, got around him, and then finally caught Lonnie. And we was coming down, around for the last two laps before we got to wipe. And I looked when I come, come down the straightaway on the back stretch. Uh, Ray Bray was right in front of uh, Breedlove. Instead of Breedlove going to the outside where he should have went, mm -hmm. he stayed behind him. When he did, I dove in on the outside of him, you know, and he got anxious and spun, uh, <laughs> spun him out, and I went on. I won the race that night. So that pretty well sticks out in front of me. What's the thing that you know is most different about the place from when you started as a kid coming out there to watch your dad run to later on when you came back out as a grandpa now? and watching the new generation of kids running out there. What do you think was so different about the place? What struck you? Well, there's, you sort of watch where they come up in the street stalkers and stuff, you know, and as, as I was racing out there, you know, and I watched them run, and it sort of just got brutal out there in the street stalkers, you know. Mm -hmm. So when they did come, they run a little bit different way than what we run back then. We run, I guess, what you call a more smarter way than what they run today because they run like a three R, they run flat out, you know, and Jack Dawsey probably lost five by not using his head. You know, he wanted mm -hmm. the, the thing of being that. So, you know, I don't know if that's good, bad, whatever, but uh, that's mm -hmm. what the difference I see from the young ones and the old ones. And to go back out there and try to run against them is, uh, it makes it hard because they run a different way, you know, of, mm -hmm. of what everybody, I don't care how fast you run, they're running, all of them's running fast enough down the straightaway to keep you from passing them. So when you get to the corner, you know, you get it. Mm -hmm. If you brutal in there, they run over you. So it, it's a different crowd. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else at the speed of you could think of who you actually enjoyed watching out on the track? And, doesn't, and, and since you've had, you've, and we'll talk here again about your open wheel experience out there because you did the midgets also and had some pretty good success there. But not necessarily just stock cars, but just in general, when you were out the speed drum and you heard this guy was hitting the track, you had to put down your wrenches and head on over and see what he was doing. Uh, I, I really ain't been out there to really watch him run, you know, after that 
since I quit racing. It's, mm -hmm. I had my own life that I wanted to change and stuff, so I wasn't going to be going out there and watching speed run. So, yeah. you know, I always liked to watch Jack run because he run, you know, flat, hard, mm -hmm. wide open. So, he, he, you know, if if I was out there, I would be watching him, you know. Mm -hmm. Dawson. <laughs> Down to Jack Dawson, Jr., understood. And one of the fellow that, that's always been significant in your career has been, of course, your father, Billy Arnold. What would you, a lot of people got him as a, actually a lot of people in the 60s loved him. He's, he was actually one of the little lovable guys. And then in the 70s, he became sort of a bad guy to image. Then he rather seemed to enjoy that at times. Uh, what, what, what would you like to say about your father? <laughs> on the racetrack, he's always been a bad guy. <laughs> but to know him, you know, as out there, you know, he probably take his heart out and give it to you. That's the right kind of person or, you know, take the fall for you. And but out there he'd spin you out and run over you or whatever. And that's but that's the way, you know, the ones that come along now and in my time never understood that of, you know, somebody beating on your bumper and moving you and going. That's the way they raced. Mm -hmm. If they could catch you and hit your bumper, they spun you out. You know, that's how all of them run said, okay, I'll I'll get you the next time, or they'll get out and fight, and then they'll, you know, be <laughs> over. But back then, there was probably a fight every other night, and they run four nights a week. <laughs> so it, it made it pretty brutal every once in a while. <clears throat> and is there anything that you want when uh, your grandkids are all grown up and taking their grandkids out, in this case, you know, out to the State Museum, wherever they're going to go, and they're going to look at the displays about the Indianapolis Speedrome? What would you like those grandkids to know about the place that made Wayne Arnold have to be out there every night, four nights a week? Well, it'd just be nice to go back and, <clears throat> you know, that was my life as growing up. And I always, when I raced, I did it 100%. When I was not racing, I was working on my race cars, you know, and that's the way it always went. And I guess that gave me the edge on everybody. And I really couldn't, when I was young, I got me a trade as a paint and body man. And I learned that earlier in my life, but what I wanted to do is race, so I didn't have time for that, you know. So my living was racing, and sometimes, you know, in the in the wintertime, you know, the bill collectors were beating on the doors and mm -hmm. got a little skippy, but, you know, summertime, we, we live real good. So that's basically, you know, what I'd like to know them, you know, and, and what I did in my racing career and all the races that I've won. Very good. Anything else you want to add? To this, uh, I mean, I know it seems like short. Sure, we got so much to talk about with Wayne Arnold. Well, but. I just wanted to, you know, add some little details to my, you know, for my dad, the things that he went through, and even the hard times. Like I said, I didn't get to race until I was 20 years old. So I helped him, and we wasn't what you call rich, or, you know, and uh, so there'd be times that we go to junkyards, which my uncle owned one, and we tear a, a motor down. We'd find a good crank, and sometimes we'd keep the main bearings. We'd put our motors together. The um, only thing, uh, I think, cost about $15 a hole to drill one, you know, only six <laughs> holes. And we'd take, uh, take and buy a new compression ring, but the scraper and the oil rings we would put in there. And it, so we'd run a little STP in them to keep the oil going by, but, you know, and won lots of races. so. Yep. That's what Dad went through is, you know, we'd roam these junkyards trying to find certain tires and stuff, you know. And some of the guys out there, I think it's Emerson's and them, they said, well, Arnold's has got money. They can wind their motor, you know, with 411 and stuff. <laughs> and I think my dad blowed three motors up in the garage before it come, you know, come race time. <laughs> so that's what he's been through, and we was always poor, you know, but we raced, won lots of races mm -hmm. by the knowledge, you know. And, Really, that's the way Bob and us and stuff, everybody thought, you know, we spent money. Is everything stock that we built, built ourselves, you know? So we just a little bit ahead of them about what it amounted to, you know? But uh, that's really about all I know to mount. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Hang on a second, let me see this yet. <laughs>